Greetings and welcome to another Just Do It DIY video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this really cool vanishing fountain. Water features are always a great addition to your landscaping, and a vanishing fountain like this is stylish, compact, and ultimately really pleasing to listen to. In the video, I'll cover the following steps. Assess and design, materials and tools, digging the reservoir, building the reservoir form, lining the reservoir, installing the aqua blocks, installing the pump, and finishing touches. For this project, we wanted a water feature close to the front porch where we could enjoy the sound of water falling without having to build a huge pond or a fountain or waterfall. We chose a large concrete planter from a landscape supply store to use as our fountain and to use an aqua block so we could hide the water source underground. Aqua blocks is a really cool product. They're strong enough to support the weight of the fountain, they're really easy to assemble, and they maximize your water storage capacity. The materials we used in this project were as follows. 24 inch concrete planter from a landscape supply store, large aqua blocks, half inch plywood, general purpose sand and gravel, PVC pond liner, pond liner underlay, submersible water pump, vinyl tubing, PVC pipe and fittings, and a six foot sheet of wire mesh. The tools we used on this project were an electric hammer with a spade bit, a hand shovel, drill bits and drivers, a circular saw, spray glue, and an eight inch steel hand tamp. The first thing I had to do was dig out a large enough area to create the reservoir. Using an electric hammer from Harbour Freight made this significantly easier than digging it all out by hand. The pit had to be 30 inches by 20 inches by 21 inches deep. It took about a day to dig out the pit and I saved the dirt in a pile to use as backfill later. Once the pit was dug out, I leveled the bottom with sand and compacted it until it was flat using a spirit level to make sure it was even on all sides. With the pit dug, I had to construct a simple wooden box to form the reservoir sides, making sure the interior space was big enough to hold the aqua blocks and the pond liner. I cut four sides of plywood and quickly nailed them together to form the box that would support the pond liner. Once constructed, I placed this into the pit, making sure all four sides were level. With the reservoir box in place, I began backfilling with the gravel and dirt I dug out earlier. When the backfill was level with the top of the box, I sprinkled some water to pack the dirt in tight before finally topping up and leveling off as necessary. To produce a watertight reservoir, I used PVC pond liner, available in various sizes from Home Depot. Before I could install it though, I had to lay down some underlayment. This is a thick, felt-like material that protects the pond liner from any sharp edges or abrasive material. You can get this from Home Depot too. I measured out the bottom and the sides in white pencil on the felt, leaving plenty of overlaps for the corners and over the top edges. Then I cut it to size with scissors. I applied spray glue to cover the insides of the box. Then I carefully applied the felt underlay to the box, folding any overlaps into the corners. I cut some extra material to cover the top edges of the corners so all the wood of the box was fully covered with felt. I dropped the liner into the reservoir trying to keep the corners neat and tidy and making sure the liner is not snagged on anything. The liner is then folded over the top and pinned into place using landscape staples. Excess liner was then trimmed away to leave about two feet around the top of the reservoir. The aqua blocks are really easy to assemble. The sides and interior bracings simply snap together, then the top and bottom snap onto them. I wanted to leave an access door to the pump, so I cut the top panel into one quarter and three quarter sections. The fountain is placed off center over the three quarter section, so this left me enough room at the side to get to the pump. Before I could install the pump, I had to fill the reservoir with water, 32 gallons of it. This took a little while. You can buy pump filter housings, but instead I used a plastic yoghurt container placed over the pump with a small vent hole to allow water in but keep stones and large debris out. Next, 
I measured and cut the required length of vinyl tubing and fed that through the aqua blocks, attaching it to the pump at one end. The other end of the tubing is fed up through the drain hole in the fountain. To test the pump, I held the tubing up at the required height and set the flow rate on the pump. From my research, I knew I needed a pump with a head lift of at least three feet. I found this 264 gallon per minute pump at Harbour Freight with a head lift of five feet. So I was pretty sure it would work. Once everything checked out, I set the fountain in place and closed the one quarter section access panel. A good shortcut to help fill the fountain and to reduce weight is to fill it with blocks of polystyrene. This displaces what amounts to a huge volume of water, which makes filling the fountain much quicker too. To hold the polystyrene in place, I weighed it down with black river rock pebbles. The pump came with several fountain heads, but we opted to leave the tubing open and below the surface. This creates a gentle ripple in the surface of the fountain, with the sound and motion of the water running down the sides was the effect we were after. To make sure the surface ripple is centered in the top of the fountain, I devised a rig made out of one inch PVC pipe. The PVC upright is cut to 18 inches and attached to a four way cross fitting. The PVC pipe is inserted over the vinyl tubing until it stands up comfortably. Two four inch stabilizer arms are attached to the cross, which forces the upright to remain centered in the fountain. The vinyl tubing is trimmed flush with the top of the PVC pipe. To help hide the PVC pipe, I sprayed it black before installing it into the fountain. Finally, I used a sheet of fine wire mesh over the top of the aqua blocks to keep gravel and leaves out of the water. The mesh is then covered with decorative stone like black river rock pebbles to complete the landscaping design. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this landscaping DIY video. Feel free to leave comments with any questions or feedback below. Have fun building water features in your garden. A vanishing fountain using aqua blocks is a really rewarding project that you will enjoy for many years. Thanks for watching and see you next time. And remember, just do it yourself.